All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to NewGen's webinar on automating small business lending. My name is Austin Toscano. I am NewGen's Senior Customer Success Manager for the U.S. Banking Vertical, and I'll be your host today. I'll be your host and moderator for the webinar today. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join us today. The response has been overwhelming, and we're excited to talk about the need for digital transformation in small business lending among financial institutions. Today, we have with us John Meyer. He's a senior director at Cornerstone Advisors. And we also have with us our co-presenter, Ankur Rawa. He is our director of banking products and solutions here at NewGen. While John takes us through the digital transformation trends in the small business lending space, Ankur will do a deep dive into how NewGen can help financial institutions achieve their digital goals. At the end of the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session, and we request that you type your questions into the question window of your GoToMeeting space anytime during the webinar, and our experts will address them at the end of the session. With all that out of the way, I hope you enjoy today's webinar, and I'll pass it over to John. Over to you, John. Thanks, Austin. Hey, everybody, thank you for joining us today. We're gonna talk about uh, you know, automating small business lending. I'm with Cornerstone Advisors. And just uh, a little bit about us, we do a lot of work with individual banks and credit unions as they do everything from system selections to contract negotiations. And we have a large industry research team. And, and that's where I'm uh, speaking from today. Uh, we do surveys of bank CEOs and credit union executives. Uh, we do lots of surveys of small businesses and consumers out there. And we try to bring that information back. And so the very first thing that I'm going to talk about, and I don't care if we can jump to the next slide, is the feedback we hear universally around 2023. This is the year of the deposit. Everybody's talking about how, uh, you know, deposits have suddenly become a big issue. This really hasn't happened in an industry since 2005, 2006. And with, you know, what had gone on with Silicon Valley Bank, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, deposits was still a very concern, big concern there as people pulled those out, right? So one thing that really highlights is we do a survey every year called what's going on in banking. And we, we survey about 150 bank executives, 150 credit union executives, all ranging between about a billion and 20 billion in assets. And we say, what's, what's your big priorities for the year? We do this in December, we released that white paper in uh, January. And you know some of the highlights from that white paper are uh, evidence of how important deposits are becoming. You can see in the upper right, for banks, uh, while in 2022 deposits were sorta of important, but we were still flush with deposits, boy, that jumped up to 51% from 21% the year prior. So a massive gain in priority for consumer deposits, retail deposits. What was more striking though for us was the graph right at the top of the slide, which is that for banks, while business deposits have always been one of the things that we've cared about, look how much they jumped from 41% last year to 72% this year. And really what we see is if you can help secure the small business loan, you can bring their deposit base over with that. And so uh, this is a significant piece. Another way we kind of look at how uh, you know, banks and credit unions are, are judging the market is what are they going to replace? And you see the number one system that community banks will replace this year will be commercial digital account opening systems for those deposits as well as those loans. Uh, we estimate at Cornerstone about 50% of the banks in the United States do not have a fully automated commercial loan system, meaning a lot of you guys are using some sort of spreading utility. You got a little bit of a tickler system somewhere and you got doc prep, whether that be with CSI or Laser Pro or one of the different doc engines. Um, but in reality, when we look at the number of banks that switched systems or bought new systems last year, commercial lending outpaced digital banking, both retail, digital ba retail and digital business banking last year. So it is the hot technology that everybody is going. And small businesses is a niche of that. There are players out there that do full commercial lending. There are players out there that do commercial lending with a module for small business. There are players out there that do just small business lending. So we're seeing a lot of different entrants into the market. 
So if we look at the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what banks are trying to do to diversify the loan portfolio. So we've had a couple of factors hit us since 2022. First of all, mortgages hit a brick wall, right? Bam, they just fell off the map in terms of refis. We still have a purchase side market. We still see a lot of starts being done in the construction industry to meet the housing demand. And we see no more mortgage refi volume. So we see a lot less fee income this year. Um, you know, the other thing that's hitting though is that property value trends are dropping as more and more uh, agencies out there are looking to not renew the same lease footprint over the next five years. I'll give an example. In New York City, property value trends have already fallen over 20% in Manhattan. Uh, in the next four years, as leases continue to drop and people, instead of needing 30,000 square feet, go to a hoteling model with work from home, and they only need 10,000 square feet. As that phenomenon continues to take place, it's estimated that property value trends in Manhattan alone will go down 39.1% overall. Uh, it's not going to hit us all in year one or year two. It's going to be an accumulative effect. And, and one of the challenges uh, with that that a lot of people are thinking about is, wow, how is that going to then impact all the services that Manhattan can provide because they drive about a third of their tax revenue from those uh, commercial leases uh, and, and commercial real estate. So our community banks are switching off of commercial real estates. Maybe you have 30, 35 or 40 percent concentration. You're trying to increase the CNI. We've seen CNI go up consistently throughout the pandemic and especially in the now we're seeing more um, commercial uh, and industrial loans become a big important part of your mix. But what was really interesting to us as we broke out some of the data was how small business lending has also jumped out of the mix. Now, if we go to the next slide, I wanna talk a little bit about the small business opportunity for community banks. So in the United States, according to the Census Bureau, there's about 32 and a half million small businesses out, out there. Um, about 26, 27 million of those are less than four employees. Um, and we define a small business as any business that has less than 10 million in annual revenue. Um, and so they're going to have different funding needs, but a lot of them need between 5,000 to 1.5 million. So when I think of commercial lending, when I was a banker, you know, we wanted our commercial lenders focusing on $15 million uh, mixed use buildings. Uh, uh, now we're not seeing that as, <laughs> as the focus, right? but we have to try to figure out how do we fulfill the needs for the $50,000 equipment financing loan or the $200,000 equipment financing loan or the $150,000 working capital loan so that somebody can um, continue to run their small business. Now we ran a survey of over 1,026 uh, small businesses during the pandemic. And we said a lot of you used your fintechs or you used a big bank to get your funding. I know you use community banks for your PPP, but for your primary line of credit, you used a, a fintech or a big bank. What, what would you prefer to do? And 70% of the survey respondents said, I'd prefer to get my money from my local community bank or credit union. But the reality is their process is kind of messed up for me. And this fintech only took 48 hours to get back to me with the decision. So uh, time is of the essence with this market. So if we're gonna have a local relationship, we need to not replicate the 50, 60, 70 day commercial lending decision that we do for CRE. And, and we need to find a way to do it uh, in a faster turnaround time using more automation for those small businesses. Now, uh, we also pulled all the SNL data from uh, SMP and uh, all the call reports that you upload. And we ran our own analysis and only about 585 community banks in the country have a greater than 20% concentration in, in business loans less than a million. So that tells me that they're focused on small business lending. They have a business banking department. Um, but surprisingly, you know, while that's a small percentage, one out of every seven community banks, uh, what we did find is that they funded 72 billion. So if I take that math and I divide the 600 by 72 billion, that's a billion two in portfolio on average. Now, how many of your CEOs would balk at getting another billion two in your asset tier? Um, uh, I don't think that would be a real problem for you. So it's a huge uh, loan opportunity out there. Um, you know, fintechs it, uh, have traditionally driven a similar amount. Now. 
one of the things we did with new gen is we also talked to a whole bunch of community banks that were having that success though over 20 percent concentration and said hey what's the secret to your success what they did uh isn't revolutionary they just put focus on it the first thing they did is they said look uh this cannot be a, a chief lending officer uh, additional responsibility this has to be somebody inside the bank director level above who's going to be focused on business banking and he or she is going to then go out and determine with the product management team at the bank what are the loan products we're going to offer and are we going to go across the board everybody walks in the door as a potential prospect or are we going to go niche focused a lot of these institutions felt very comfortable in things like construction loans and draw management or they felt very comfortable in doctor's offices or dentist officers or veterinarians or other professionals where they had high needs for equipment finance and so they found their niche and they focused on that and that director of business banking or above went ahead and then worked through the loan process at the institution to figure out how do we shave the time from say a 50-day cni traditional process down to something within a week and how do we do that from a loan process perspective how do we do that to make sure we're getting the right cross sales and by cross sales typically when i'm dealing with a cre deal or a big cni loan i'm thinking about stuff like treasury management that's not the cross sell here the cross sell is how do i swing your deposit base over and then get you on uh, additional credit facilities like corporate credit cards and things like that and so as we drive over from cross sell uh, you know, do I need to have some people in relationship management? And it's a very different focus. So if I'm, you know, a commercial lender, I'm probably going to need to book a million five in new business a month. Well, if I'm a, a relationship manager for small businesses, I probably still need to carry a pretty healthy quota over, over a million bucks. So how do I do that? How do I get centers of influence? How do I partner with uh, tax accountants that do business with multiple small businesses? How do I work with website designers in my area who stand up websites? How do I work with the Rotary and, and uh, Lions Club and uh, Kiwanis and all the other places where these small businesses uh, collect to network? Um, you know, what do I need to do to uh, help my cash intensive small businesses with Strap and Coin Exchange in the branches and make sure they understand what that looks like? And so those relationship managers are out there um you know facilitating that conversation still carrying a large book of business and also focused on trying to grow those small businesses into commercial clients over time so then the last thing i'll leave you with is uh you know really when we talk with these uh, clients that were successful we said what was it that was key in your technology stack that helped you to differentiate and for the most part they honed in on five different areas they said look you got to have a digital application now we ran a separate survey during the pandemic of 184 institutions and there was over 40 percent abandonment for unsecured and secured lending to small businesses and we we peeled the onion and said well why is that well for one their digital application instead of just taking 5, 10, 15 minutes, replicated the branch experience of over an hour, which was a hideous experience for these small businesses, now, especially when they could go out to another solution like PayPal and have that fast turnaround. Uh, we also found that there were clunky digital identity verification solutions. So if you're asking out of wallet questions or you're asking for a bunch of documentation, small businesses maybe don't have the same uh, documentation that you would expect, um, uh, you know, a commercial uh, client to have. So how do I get your driver's license? How do I pull a credit check on the owner? How do I get a couple of bank statements? And how do I verify that you're there? I love Bank Secrecy Act officers for a lot of my career. I built BSA, AML, and fraud detection systems. And so I really appreciate that group. But boy, when you get in there with those folks, they wanna ask all sorts of questions in the lending process. Are you a marijuana related business? Are you a cash intensive business? Are you a money service business? You know, all of that can be taken care of digitally today through the providers to determine whether a small business is who they say they are and doing what they say they do. Uh, auto decisioning came up over and over, right? We send off our, uh, our credit memo to underwriting as a commercial lender 
And then we expect a whole bunch of people in the audit decisioning world or in the underwriting world to go through all the ratios. Well, in the case of uh, small business lending, especially a $100,000 loan, you can't replicate that process. You need something that's going to generate a decision very fast. You've got to have the ability for people to e-sign and get their digital docs uploaded. And then lastly, you got to have a way for all of this information to get boarded to the core so that uh, instantly we can start working on things like debit cards and other services around a full DDA um, and uh, commercial uh, checking account. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Anker, let you talk more about uh, you know what you're doing at uh, NewGen and how some of these um, technology steps might help uh, get addressed by your solution. Thanks a lot, uh, John, uh, and uh, you know thanks for all of those insights. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, the audience has uh, you know uh, added value to their time uh, with this. Uh, so let me uh, let me go to the next slide and. Uh, uh, whenever we do these kind of webinars, the idea is to get a lot of insights from uh, analysts like Cornerstone, who would talk about why and what, right? So why is small business lending so important in uh, the current era? And what needs to be done uh, by the banks and credit unions to ensure that they are uh, taking that uh, pie of the business, right? So let's move from why and what, which has been covered by John, uh, to how. So how does Nugen help you in uh, handling the small business lending? How does Nugen help you in transforming the way you would approach and implement and automate small business lending? I'll just take it over right from uh, the point where John left, right? So John mentioned about all of these five steps that should be taken to ensure that your digital transformation of small business is up to the mark right so he talked about digital application digital identity verification auto decisioning uh, doc prep and core account boarding and honestly from the vendor side when we look at uh, these pointers uh, these seems to be uh, table stakes for us right uh, but when it comes to the banks and financial institutions when we talk to them it's always surprising to know that they have not been able to automate their processes. They have not been able to achieve a complete digital application. They have not been able to achieve auto decisioning or even a complete, uh, completely automated lending process. Right. So it's very surprising. So we'll talk about what are the things that we as uh, NewGen uh, help the banks in automating their small business lending or any other lending processes. Now. Because we call these as table stakes from the vendor side, let's let's uh, draw an analogy and uh, a parallel and call these as five senses to achieve uh, a, a, an automated uh, a small business lending. And I'll touch upon the, this later on uh, why I'm calling these as five senses. OK, so all of these points which John mentioned are in line with the digital transformation journey that uh, Nugen helps its customers in automating. So we call it our Nugen One platform, which is a which is a digital transformation platform. Okay. Now the very first thing that John talked about, digital application. Now this is important. It seems simple and easy, but it is not. We have seen, as I said, we have seen uh, banks trying to replicate their application form as online page, but that uh, will draw the traffic, but it'll uh, result in a high abandonment rate because it was not thought through well. So what we have seen is that there are no validations, there are no integrations with the third party systems for ID verification. There are no options for the customers to upload documents if required. So what we do in this case is we provide having an experience of more than uh, 30, 40 banks automating their online journey, digital journey. We come with best practices we provide a frictionless experience for the loan application. So be it a retail uh, customer or a small business customer, they have it frictionless wherein minimum data entry is required. All of the data if required can be pulled from the online banking, from the core banking, or if these are new customers, these data elements can be pulled from the ID proofs like driver's license or passport, okay? So the idea is to, minimize the friction points or the uh, manual touch points throughout the journey okay 
secondly it is always omni channel we understand that digital is important online is important but digital uh, can also be applied to the in branch experience okay so it's not that digital is only relevant for the online journey uh, the same technologies integrations uh, methods that we are adopting online are also applicable for in branch experience so e sign id verification uh, minimizes the data entry minimizes the work and the turnaround time and we apply it to all the channels so be it online be it somebody calling up the customer care to apply for that loan or if they are coming into the branch uh, if they are accessing the application through their mobile device or a tablet or a laptop idea is, here is to provide all those options but at the same time give them a cross channel experience as well okay, which means that they can start from one channel and move on to an, uh, another channel seamlessly without having to rekey any information okay so that's again the second uh, objective that we usually have with our online uh, experience the third point that we have seen is uh, presenting need based products so if you are able to ask few questions validate that we are able to serve them through a zip code or a geo code based fencing and then ask what is the need are they looking for uh, working capital financing are they looking to purchase equipment so based on those questions it's always fruitful to present the right set of products and uh, accordingly capture the relevant information rather than keeping it a cookie cutter solution uh, which may uh, result in a uh, lot of redundant data entry Finally, uh, we have the visibility from a technology standpoint. Uh, we want to ensure that whatever application or whatever request the customers are applying or uh, submitting, they should be uh, having a complete visibility of that request. During the time when they are submitting the application, they should know how much of the, the application has been completed. So there's a milestone view on the digital applications with Nugen. So they understand what percentage has been completed even after completing the application they would get automated email alerts highlighting that their application has moved from let's say submission to underwriting to approval all of those stages and they can themselves go on to nugen portal and they can track their status if they want to do it uh, in the runtime okay and then the human assistance part is where uh, this is a recommendation this is a thought process that we have we have seen uh, while digital helps you uh, grab the attention of a lot of the uh, technology friendly folks but it always helps to have a human assistance integrated into your online journey so we have seen that there are tools available within the market which can be easily integrated into nugen solution uh, for co-browsing for chatting uh, for video uh, calls audio calls based assistance for the applicants okay so moving on to the next one we talked about digital identity verification let's call it the second sense uh, it is applied in the online journey as well as the in branch journey uh, as well as if somebody is calling from the customer care so we have seen that there are several places where you can adopt uh, third party systems technologies to ensure that we are first of all ensuring that this person is valid they have a valid contact address uh, contact uh, uh, number or email address and then it's a person the same person who is applying for the uh, loan okay and then we also ensure that these are not fraudulent applications so we have seen that during the initiation it's always good to have an online banking integration wherein we are able to authenticate existing customers and at the same time pre-fill a lot of data for them but if these are new customers we uh, allow the id proof like passport state ids driver's license to be used to extract the data the same de number of uh, details like the first name last name social security number which we capture is used for the next two checks okay so for id verification we integrate with the third party systems used by the banks uh, so we leverage the banks uh, existing investments whether banks are using alloy check systems experian transunion uh, all of those and we aligned with the uh, compliance strategy of the bank right so we understand that out of wallet are going out of fashion there are uh, id uh, less verification methods available so based on the comfort of the bank in their growth in the digital journey 
we accommodate all of these integrations and ensure that there's a seamless ID verification for individuals as well as businesses. And as we discussed earlier, a lot of these small business businesses have either a sole proprietorship or it's a partnership or if even if it is not a partnership there are only fewer employees there right so we are uh, validating individuals as well as the businesses one of the things where we uh, wanted to point out here is that we have seen that especially the vendors like alloy and middesk uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, traction from from their side simply because of the flexibility that alloy provides and on the business side uh, middesk provides a document list verification of the businesses right so there's no need to upload articles of incorporation uh, tax returns all of those things all of that is done through the mid desk to ensure that the owners are correctly captured uh, you know the type of entity is cap uh, correctly captured and so on okay on the fraud check now this is where we have seen that it's it's a good to have but it will become a table stakes uh, going forward to ensure that there is minimum fraud happening in the uh, in the online journey you cannot really avoid it because we have seen that every time there's a control in place there are newer methods to bypass that control right? so we have seen that uh, banks are nowadays uh, institutionalizing ai based fraud check wherein depending on how the application is being submitted if the words are copied if the applicants are filling the application based on their memory or if they are copy pasting so based on that behavior itself the uh, uh, the system identifies if it is a fraudulent application or not okay so we recommend uh, as a as a best practice going forward to apply those kind of uh, models to ensure that there's minimum fraud on the online uh, applications okay finally based on the digital identity verification we have seen that the banks would uh, uh, check the results as either approved may provide a conditional approval wherein the conditions can also be automatically generated it can be submitted for review be because some of the uh, flags uh, were raised let's say there was an ofac hit right so in those cases it can be submitted for review and then automated counter offers also so if the application is declined automatically can we present a counter offer right in the online journey without having to go back to a manual review okay so those are the things that we think uh, expanding the id verification part and encapsulating all of these factors will help uh, in a, a perfect digital uh, transformation okay now the third thing that john talked about auto decisioning so we have seen that a lot of our customers segment their loans especially the business loans in three different buckets okay so they call it either no touch low touch or high touch loans and this is a sample profiling of these loans every bank will have their own nuances as to how they would like to segregate these loans so some of the banks we have seen uh, for the no touch loans which can actually be run a uh, decision by the rules engine by the system itself would be uh, the loans applied uh, by new customers or existing customers but should fall in the range of 50000 to 250000 typically that kind of range and have a good credit score right so again there could be multiple other parameters as well uh, like if they have existing uh, loans what is their exposure how many deposit accounts they have with the bank but i'm just highlighting some of the examples here so any such loans can be handled straight through which means that if the application is submitted the decision will be made online they will get a soft approval and once the application is submitted they will also get the e-sign uh, documents to be e-signed to complete the uh, closing process as well okay when it comes to low touch we are talking about the uh, the middle cases wherein these loans cannot be auto approved maybe these are for new customers the loan value is high and the credit score is good but not good enough to auto approve them okay so in this case because the risk is slightly higher we have seen that there's a minimum uh, financial analysis done for these uh, applications so we have seen that typically uh, you would review borrowers credit score uh, the liquidity a net worth all of those things and we have seen that these parameters do not go beyond 10 or 15 uh, key financial 
uh, elements or uh, indicators okay so based on this the system can auto decision but it is also up to the uh, person the underwriter to take a judgment whether these loans have to be approved or not okay and we are talking about small businesses so we'll limit it to that but as soon as you go to the third uh, bucket which is high touch loans that's where we are talking about a full fledged uh, advanced uh, underwriting risk assessment wherein we are talking about global cash flows discounted cash flows uh, all of those things okay so banks should be able to categorize them uh, their small business loans in no touch and low touch bucket to ensure that the appropriate processing or workflows are adopted okay the third uh, the fourth thing which uh, we discussed was uh, ensuring that the closing process as much as possible should be automated so while we already have integrations into the systems like laser pro vault occlus csi all of those uh, we have seen that typically depending on banks preferences some of the uh, customers may feel more comfortable uh, physically signing the documents whereas others who prefer an e sign the banks can send automated emails right from nugen system get those uh, documents signed okay and the process of generating the documents itself is a uh, fairly simple with nugen as we have tight integrations into these systems so uh, typically with some systems like csi we have seen uh, there's no need for redundant data entry at both the places okay and once the documents are generated these are seamlessly pulled back into nugen okay finally uh, talking about the core account boarding that has been the core objective when we implement the solution so we do not want even 99 percent of the data limited for the auto board boarding we always try for 100 percent of the data and we've already integrated with various systems like fiserv jack henry and different versions right from signature to uh, premier to uh, precision jack henry scimitar as well as uh, silver lake fis Deminos, finestra and the list goes on but the idea here is that we have already done this integration multiple times but we do obviously require the middleware provided by the these core banking systems but when we implement this solution we always have in all of our implementations boarded the data 100 uh, percent into the system in real time okay so that has been the case and whatever details as you can see on the screen uh, some of the details may not be required for a for uh, loan approval process but this is required for boarding so we understand that part we ensure that we capture it during the boarding step or the queue and once this data is captured there's a single click which allows our customers to book the loan right so in that single click we are pushing multiple calls to the core banking to push the collaterals push the escrows accounts receivable all of those and then generating the loan account number or creating the customer if the customer doesn't exist immediately right so this thing happens within seconds okay so once again coming back to my uh, uh, the parallel that i drew uh, initially so five steps for digital transformation these are five senses now let's talk about the sixth sense right so i would like to call it the sixth sense because we have talked about five table stakes from vendors perspective a lot of banks are still striving to achieve that and we can help all of those banks but when it, when we talk to the sixth sense i would call the artificial intelligence the ai layer as the sixth sense and the reason why i call it uh, that is because this is what can help you predict the future okay and excuse my fanaticism with the, the Sixth Sense movie, but uh, what, what we uh, say here is that with the artificial intelligence layer built on top of the historical data that the banks would have, the credit unions would have, there's a lot of potential, and this is still kind of a technology which is uh, being stabilized by different vendors, but we believe that it will uh, help a lot of banks to predict a lot of things about the, their loan portfolio. So right when the right from the point when the application is submitted based on the data based on the time spent on the application by the customers based on the time spent by the customers to get back on the uh, additional document requirements based on their portfolio on uh, the income the business income years in the uh, business 
banks should be able to create models around uh, prediction of uh, application closure rate that how many of those applications will be closed with what percentage confidence can the system predict that time to close what kind of time they will take to close uh, risk scoring how risky the customer is right uh, and then presenting the best counter offers for these customers so if they are not eligible for the application what is the best product uh, whether it is working capital or a term loan or even a credit card okay and then finally the customer default which is going beyond even CCL uh, models wherein we are able to analyze the entire portfolio and with the AI modeling uh, kind of predict uh, some of these now we are not saying that these are compliances that are being handled by the AI model we are saying that these will be transparent explainable and prescriptive remarks and suggestions or to the bank from the AI models which can be utilized by the banks as a, as, as a heed or suggestion and then the decision is finally taken by the banks right so obviously none of these uh, applications can be uh, can be uh, rejected just based on the AI uh, remarks but AI will uh, also explain why some of these loans uh, could be risky right so as you can see on the screen itself the uh, ai models can highlight what are the factors in the application that are uh, adding to the riskiness of the application and what are the factors which are actually playing uh, positive uh, for the applicant okay so having said that uh, these are i think the six senses that i wanted to cover in my uh, in my presentation and just to recap a new gen one platform which is a combination of a low code uh, platform along with the integrated content management provides an out-of-the-box solution for small business lending and if you see on the top we have the application omni-channel application journey we have the auto underwriting modules along with the, uh, the provision to review the application if the applications are not auto approved and then also integrate tightly with the doc prep systems for closing generating the closing documents uh, sending the e-sign packages automatically and then finally boarding the loan into the core banking the entire process is handled with a new gen system there's no duplicate data entry which is done within the system and throughout the process users will see new gen user experience rather than jumping onto the third-party applications okay now this particular process can be automated by any of the vendors if they start writing the code if they start writing uh, some of the uh, solutions of if they start using you know the programming languages what is different about newgen is that all of this is built on newgen one platform okay uh, so what what i mean by newgen one platform is that it has components which drive the agility of the business process the workflows rules so we have components like process designer which helps you in segregating and bucketing uh, the process the loans into low touch no touch and defining a different workflow route if it is a high touch loan or a no touch loan or a low touch loan okay with the form designer we are able to align to your branding guidelines as well as remove or add the data that is required to process these loans we have our inbuilt rules engine which will host all of your auto decisioning criteria which you can manage uh, on an ongoing basis so let's say six months down the line you want to change your auto underwriting criteria for a specific product so you have that flexibility as a banker without any coding uh, info knowledge or programming knowledge you can actually edit and uh, continuously improve your auto underwriting auto eligibility counter offer uh, rules within the system okay Finally, you have the reporting dashboard, which is part of the process. Uh, different users, depending on their profile, will be able to refer to the relevant information. So the management can look at the entire portfolio, risk appetite, the kind of exposure they have, the income that they're making on that risk portfolio. Whereas when it comes to the lending folks, the credit head can actually see some of the uh, uh, sourcing reports or the pipeline reports. Okay. Uh, AI ML is again one of the optional component within the Nugen platform, which we are uh, continuously improving. But we have seen that typically AI models will work uh, once we have used 
the historical data of the banks extensively, right? And it is different for each bank, the kind of models which are used. So we always uh, urge all of our customers who go live uh, to apply these AI models on top of their historical portfolio to continuously improve their process, okay? And then we have integration adapters, which are again configurable. So tomorrow there is a new system. Uh, typically, we require all of those, all of our web services to integrate or add that new system into the process, right? So all of these components that we have help us as well as customers to ensure that any new requirement which comes in or the current requirements, we meet those 100% every time. So there's no reason why the solution will become obsolete. So obsolescence is never an option with the Nugen platform. And that's why we are different here, wherein all of these changes will be continuously added. So three years down the line, you're not required to review uh, the, uh, the solution or again, look for another solution in the market. So with that, I will uh, close my uh, you know presentation here. I hope we have added uh, uh, value to your time, and uh, I'll hand it over to Austin. Thanks, Ankur, and thank you, John. Those are very insightful presentations. All right, just as a reminder to everybody watching, I want to let you know that uh, at any time you can go into your GoToMeeting space, into your question window, and type in your questions. I'll go ahead and read off some of the questions that we've already received. So this question would be from John or for John. Uh, with the recent financial news of some banks experiencing the trouble that they've been experiencing since Friday, uh, what kind of impact do you think robust small business lending can have on a bank's stability? Well, I, it's a good question. I think everybody's asking that question. Are my depositors all of a sudden going to make a run on the bank? Um, I think again, we we talked about this that you know 2023 is the year of the deposit. So. More and more uh, clients are interested in attracting those deposits. I do want to highlight with Silicon Valley Bank, you know, they had three unique things that happened that make them different than anybody else. One, they were the place where a parking lot in their deposit base for a lot of investment income, either via VCs or via private equity firms. So if you had a company and you took it private with one of these firms and they gave you 30 million bucks as part of their equity, it got parked in your um, you know, checking account basically there to be used as a rainy day fund as you grew your business. No small businesses aren't that way. Most of them are gonna have a very different deposit makeup and they're really a working capital uh, deposit makeup. Uh, the second thing that happened at SPB is that to offset this from an asset liability management perspective, they invested in 10-year treasuries. Treasuries are usually a very safe bet for back by retirement, but 10 years with the mark-to-market rules really took a hit uh, as the rates continue to increase from the Fed. And so they lost nearly 100% of their investment value. They couldn't fire sell those uh, to offset some liquidity risk. And then the third thing that happened is those VCs and those PE guys, who in my mind need equal culpability in this whole thing, uh, you know, encouraged their, their businesses that they funded to go make a run on the bank and withdraw that money. Uh, so, you know, that's a unique situation that we don't necessarily see in most community banks. They're very well capitalized. They have a diversity of a book of business. Um, and in this particular case, what we're advocating is this is another way to increase that diversity as CRE renewals, uh, in particular the uh, non-owner occupied CRE, start to creep up and you need a different loan pool uh, as that loan pool potentially decreases and you need deposits uh, as a way to attract business deposits. So I, I judge that the, the world of SVP and even the world of some of these others is, is very different than than what we see in the typical community bank. My hope is that the regional bank market continues to bounce back. We need competition in this country and we need a healthy banking system. Yeah, and I think uh, just to just to add to that, uh, John, I think we were discussing the SVB uh, debacle um, uh, just uh, a few few moments ago, right? So, and I think one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I personally believe is that uh, uh, with the with the short term uh, assets, right, like the retail uh, loans as well as the uh, uh, small business loans, as we see that, especially in the community banking market, uh, because a lot of these small businesses trust community banks. There's a huge potential as we see the 
uh, CNI, CRE uh, loans market being saturated, handled by a lot of uh, uh, large banks, right? For the community banks with the trust that small businesses have, it's always ideal to have a good portfolio of uh, small business loans in, in your kitty, right? So with, with a digital small business lending, uh, I think that is uh, the way to go, wherein uh, we can have an automated lending process. The customers get a quicker turnaround time, a quicker disbursement of funds, and you get a you know sound portfolio of the small business loans uh, which are secured. So again, just just wanted to touch upon that. Absolutely. Thanks, Ankur. Thanks, John. Uh, this next question is for Ankur. Are there any financial scoring models available which can be utilized readily from the market? Uh, for automatically decisioning small business loans? Yes, so I'll, I'll answer that and then I'll also probably you know, ask John to uh, chime on that, uh, chime in on that, right? So, uh, yes, so so idea here is that we have seen that a lot of uh, uh, third party uh, systems, especially the 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 kind uh, who provide these kind of services like SP, Moody's, all of those, right? So sometimes they would have the models uh, which work, right? And uh, uh, they would present it uh, to the uh, to the customers but one of the things which i always try to highlight is there is always some kind of uniqueness with every financial institution right so the kind of portfolio you have the kind of customers you have uh, the length of time you've been working with your customers is always different so when we experimented when we deployed uh, the uh, ai platform uh, at some of our existing customers we saw that each one of them required a different model to pull out the results, right? So uh, I would say that while there are available uh, products, models in the market, uh, it's always good to have one created and uh, aligned uniquely to your business needs because uh, sometimes you may try to implement or adopt to a different model, uh, which the other banks uh, are using, which may not be fit for you. So I just wanted to highlight that. John, any comments on that? Yeah, I would, I would argue, you know, we've done some research on people using different decision engines and um, yeah, 70% of the community banks out there still use credit score of the primary business owner um, as their number one driver uh, and then they look at some cash flow analysis mm -hmm. so I, I, I would argue that we're still uh, early on in our adoption the big thing I, I would like you to think through is especially as a business is working to establish itself it's not going to have two years of tax returns it's not going to have a whole bunch of other stuff. So you need to be flexible with your model to think through, how do I bring in bank statements? How do I use alternative scoring criteria like utility, telecom, rent, other uh, consistent payment vehicles that help me understand, uh, you know, that this is a good credit risk. Um, you know, and one of the things about NewGen and, and, you know, what they offer is the ability for you to see, you know, exactly what, the model is predicting so that you can go and look back and see, you know, probability default loss given default on similar type uh, loans. And so I, I argue that you need to, um, you know, always pick your niche, learn that niche really well, um, learn what the triggers are, and then you can design your models around that and feel pretty comfortable uh, as long as that model's transparent and explainable, as Ankur talked about. Okay, okay. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. I think this question would be applicable to both of you. Um, I'll start with you, John, and we can uh, move down on to get his perspective. Uh, so assuming that small business lending is a simpler implementation uh, as compared with commercial lending, what are the challenges uh, in automatic small business lending in an automatic small business lending solution? So I think that, you know, it comes down to you know, the typical consultant speak of people, process, product, and technology. And so you can partner with a technology company like NewGen and they can bring a lot of this stuff, but you as a community banker need to get the people involved. That's why I said you gotta have a director level above who's driving this. Uh, he or she's gonna need to think through what the process is gonna be so that you modify the underwriting process and you speed it up. Um, you're also gonna have to have new products potentially. So a good product manager is going to team up with that individual. And so those three components um, probably in our experience are what hold more people back than the technology front. The technology has been developed for years and deployed for years by successful uh, community banks and credit unions. Ankur, your thoughts? No, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you, John, right? So as I said, you know, as vendors, 
we are usually surprised right and i'll uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? So, um, and this is not non-banking, right? So uh, we went to a, a media company, right? And uh, uh, as a media company, uh, you know, one of the uh, company sports channels, right? Uh, which is our customers. And uh, we, we would assume that because of uh, them being a media company, a lot of their processes would be automated. Right? But when we went there, the process of the advertisements being ingested and then being presented was so archaic that we were surprised right so the reality is really different at uh, all the levels so i would say that we are surprised that why these uh, banks have not automated the small business lending but i think you are right it's a people problem as well wherein the seriousness the commitment has to be there from the bank side you have to have that executive sponsor uh, somebody who is uh, treating this as a full time project and once you understand the importance and significance of small business lending you will make sure that you are allocating you know the amount of time that is required there right so you deploy uh, enough uh, good people you allocate the time properly right we we understand that all of the uh, bankers have their own uh, daily jobs but this is also important right so uh, they need to deploy and allocate resources to the project to ensure that they are giving uh, the uh, enough feedback to the vendors to ensure that it's it's successful. Okay, uh, so so I would I would really concur with you on that. So it's 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 not a technology problem. It's more of a, a people and processes uh, problem. Thanks, Augur. Thanks, John. All right. So uh, reaching back out to uh, to the attendees of this uh, webinar. If you would like to ask any of your questions, please feel free to go into your question window if you go to meeting uh, instance and uh, type in your question. I'll uh, be on the lookout for some updated questions. Just give it a few minutes, see if anything comes in. And even you know, if, even if uh, there are some questions which may uh, pop up in your head later on, uh, you can always uh, connect us to our website. Uh, you know, and uh, the recording of this uh, you know, uh, webinar will also be available uh, shortly. Absolutely. All right, seeing uh, seeing nothing so far. Uh, thank you both for uh, your insights today. And thank you for answering the attendee questions. Uh, again, we, everybody who is able to attend today, we sincerely appreciate your presence and your questions here today. Uh, we hope you learned something new and useful about automating small business lending and how NewGen can be a meaningful part of that journey. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.